guys, I'm Karen Cabot, and it is finally time for Halloween. I'm so excited. I love dressing up, and I love watching movies like Teen Witch, and Casper, and Halloween Town, and Halloween Town 2, Calabar's Revenge. I'm not really into actual scary movies. But anyway, today I have a bunch of DIYs and decorations that you can make if you're bored or if you're procrastinating from your homework. But don't blame me if you fail your tests because you were too busy making candy corn garlands. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe for new DIY videos every single week and make sure to hit that like button. And I think that's everything. Let's get into it. First up, we're going to make the succulents of our goth Halloween dreams. For this, you'll need a fake succulent. Please use a fake one and not a real plant. Use black craft paint to paint the succulent. And you should use a paintbrush for this rather than spray paint because there are a lot of nooks and crannies that spray paint just isn't going to get to. Once you've painted the entire succulent, you can paint the flower pot as well. I'm using silver gilding paint, but of course you can use any color you like. And I'm also bringing the silver paint onto the top and inside of the flower pot and onto the fake rocks. Let that dry and then you could be done, but I decided to add a little texture to the flower pot by using black paint and a dry brush. Really only try to get a tiny bit of paint on there, just enough to make it look a little weathered. Similarly, I also added a tiny bit of silver paint to the succulent just to define the edges and add some texture. Of course, you don't only have to use silver and black. I also made one where I painted the succulent with gold gilding paint and the flower pot with black paint. This is the perfect way to take your summer decorations into fall by decorating with plants that are as black as our tortured souls. Anyway, if you want to decorate your clothing for Halloween, next I'm going to show you how to make these emoji pins. Begin by printing out your emojis onto cardstock, and I'll link the website where I downloaded these right down below. Roughly cut them out and then use a glue stick to glue them onto poster board or chipboard just so they're a little more sturdy. Once the glue is dry, cut them out with an outline around each emoji. Now the secret ingredient is Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. This stuff is so cool. All you do is cover your pins with a layer of it and let it dry overnight. Do the outline and then fill in the middle, but don't get overzealous and put too much onto your pin or it could spill over like mine did here. But I found you can still salvage it if you just carefully nudge the shape out of the puddle. So let them dry overnight and then there should be a clear plasticky dome on each one. If the Mod Podge didn't quite get to the edges, you can trim them using detail scissors. Unfortunately, my little ghost friend bled a little bit under the Mod Podge, but the rest were fine. So I think it's just the black printer ink that doesn't work so well. So all that's left to do is to glue a pin onto the back of each one. And then you can rock your Halloween emojis to celebrate in a slightly more subtle way than putting on an entire costume. Next, of course we have to have a perler bead project in this video, so I'm going to show you how to make this candy corn garland. You'll need a star pegboard for this, and we'll be using white, orange, and yellow perler beads. Arrange your beads in this triangle design, and you can actually make three at a time on each pegboard. Iron them just like you would with any other perler bead project and then flip them over and one by one iron the other side. Now you should have something that looks like this, so go ahead and make as many of them as you like. Then use a thumbtack to poke a hole into the top of each one and add a jump ring. 
And finally, grab some string and tie each candy corn onto the string, trying to keep them as evenly spaced as you can. And that's it! You've made a candy corn garland that is perfect to decorate for Halloween. Or if you don't want to make a million candy corns, you can totally just make one and turn it into a festive keychain to put onto your backpack or your keyring. Next up, I'm so happy I finally found a way to use these mini cauldrons that I got from the craft store years ago. We're going to make these cute little photo holders. You'll need wire and a mini clothespin for this. Cut a piece of wire that's a couple inches long. Then use pliers to bend the bottom into a loop, and I found it helped to wrap it around a pencil. You just want a base that you'll be able to glue down. Then use plenty of hot glue to glue the other end of the wire to the clothespin, and put some hot glue over the wire to really seal it in there. Now use more hot glue to glue the wire to the center of the cauldron, but then realize that you accidentally put it in backwards, so pull it out and re-glue it so it's facing the right way. Once that's dry, grab some sort of cotton batting, I'm using the stuff they sell as spider webs this time of year, and put that in place to make the smoke coming out of the cauldron. And that's it! If you don't have a mini cauldron like this, you can totally make it with any small container you have, like this one where I used a jar and fake moss, and I think it is just too precious. You could use these to hold photos, as name cards at a dinner party, to hold up a paper on your desk that you need to reference, there are so many possibilities. And finally, I couldn't do a Halloween craft video without decorating a pumpkin. For this one, I decided to paint it black using craft paint. Once that was dry, I grabbed my glow-in-the-dark duct tape, which I'll link down below, and insider secret, it's actually the exact same thing as glow-in-the-dark gaff tape, only it's sold under the duck brand. So instead of being plasticky and shiny like most duct tapes, it's more of a fabric cloth tape. So anyway, lay down the strip of tape on your cutting mat, and use a craft knife to cut a super thin piece of tape. Then just start putting that on the pumpkin to make a random geometric pattern. There's no skill required here, just keep adding more strips of tape until you like the way it looks. Or you could also put the duct tape onto a piece of sticker paper backing, and then use a hole punch to make little glow-in-the-dark polka dots. Stick these all over a mini pumpkin, and it is just too cute. They look really graphic and stylish during the day, but then at night, they glow in the dark. And they take no artistic skill to make, but they still look super cool. How fun were those? I would love to know in a comment right down below which one was your favorite, or if you're still watching, I want you to also tell me what is your favorite Halloween movie? If it's Teen Witch, then you are my new BFF. Remember that time that I dressed up as Louise from Teen Witch? I still think that is my best costume ever. I doubt any of you will be able to top that. <laughs> That makes no sense if you haven't seen the movie. Anyway, if you're new here and you want even more Halloween DIYs, I'll have an entire playlist for you right down below. I'm showing you how to make Halloween phone cases and how to dress up like a Starbucks drink and how to dress up like Kim Possible, which was my costume last year. But now I've got to go work on this year's costume, which no one is going to guess. I mean, you're welcome to try, but you're not going to get it. So stay tuned to find out what that's going to be, and I'll see you all next time.